Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 26 and in this one we're going to have a very fast look at the process of esterification. Specifically what you're being asked to do is to investigate the production in a school laboratory of simple esters. Now obviously if you're going to investigate this you actually need to carry out this experiment and it's certainly something that you'll need to do in the classroom. But we do want to have a look at a little bit of the background just to help fill some of those gaps in, uh, prepare you for the experiment that you're going to be doing in class, uh, and also for any questions that you may get in, in relation to the process of esterification. Most importantly, we need to be across the fact that an ester is an organic compound which is created when an alcohol combines with a carboxylic acid. And the formation that occurs is an ester and water, H2O. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so esterification is a type of chemical reaction. It's a, it's a process where an alcohol and an alkanoic or carboxylic acid are added to one another to produce a new organic product. The simplest way for us to demonstrate this is to uh, write it down in terms of the structural formulae. So I'm going to pick two um, to start off with. The first one I'm going to pick is this one. Hopefully as I draw these you'll be starting to name them as we go along. So this is an OH group so therefore it's an alcohol. It only has one carbon so this would be methanol. The second one I want to look at is an alkanoic acid. So let me pick this one. So you can see that the COOH is the characteristic functional group for our acids. And the fact that it has two carbons means it's going to be ethanoic acid. But what is going to form? Well, the first thing that we need to be aware of is the fact that we're going to end up with a water molecule. So I'm going to put the water molecule in here. And we're also going to end up with another organic product, which is actually what's left when these two combine with one another. So we need to see if we can find out where we're going to get um, that bond occurring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume, and this is an assumption that um, is not necessarily a correct one, um, but I'm going to assume it just because it makes life a little bit easier for us at the moment, that our acid is going to donate its little proton from here, and that's going to link in with the OH group from here, and that's where the water molecule is going to be. So therefore, if I replace those two with a bond, and that bond is effectively going to be, if you like, this bond here, then uh, we might be able to draw this and show how these two have linked together. Okay, I've exaggerated this molecule a little bit just so we can see exactly what's happened. So I've removed the H and the OH group. Now, when we carry out some um, testing on this, we can find that sometimes the OH group has actually come from the acid, but that just confuses things at the moment. So let's just stay with what we have. So the water molecule needs two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if we take the hydrogen from the acid and the OH from the methanol, then that leaves us with a bond between the carbon from the methanol end and the oxygen that was originally bonded to the hydrogen from the acid end. And so you can see that's this bond right here. That's that little ester bond. Now what that means is that we have a methyl group at the front. And effectively, we have the salt of that acid left behind. So ethanoic acid, when it uh, releases a proton, forms an ion which we would call ethanoate. And if you can remember that and how to name those um, salts from the acids, then that will help you to name these esters. Because the name for this ester is methyl ethanoate. And that's because the ethanoate part of the name has come from the original acid 
and the methyl part has come from the original alcohol. You can tell which part of this complex molecule when it's not drawn with different colored bonds has actually come from the acid by looking for the carbon that's attached to the double bonded oxygen. If you find that one, that one has to have originated from the acid. So when you're going through and naming these esters, that's the key one you want to focus on. So in this case, methyl ethanoate. Now this is a nice reaction, but there's a couple of conditions that I haven't looked at yet, and we need to consider these if we're going to produce an ester in the laboratory. So we have a few challenges associated with carrying out the process of esterification in a school laboratory. The first one is the reaction is very slow at room temperature. The easiest way to overcome this is to increase the temperature. And we can do that by um, heating up the mixture with a Bunsen burner or a water bath uh, or some sort of um, heat mantle, anything that will raise the temperature. The second important point is that esterification is actually a reversible reaction. So on the previous slide, I wrote it as if it went to completion. Well, it doesn't. And this is a problem. It means that when we write the process, so if I was to go back and write my original equation, methanol plus ethanoic acid, I would need to use my equilibrium arrow in order to form the methyl ethanoate plus water. And of course, we now know we can write these in structural formulae form. We can write them in molecular formula form. I've just written them in words at the moment. So we get used to seeing the form in which we would expect to see these esters written. Now, the fact that it's reversible means that we now can rely on our understanding of equilibria to manipulate the system in some ways is to drive the reaction forward. So understanding what's going on in this process may help us to favor the forward reaction or, or drive the reaction to the right towards an increase in yield, an increase in products. So we need to apply the same principles that we used in our first module um, to this particular equilibrium. Now the third challenge that we have with this process is the reactants and the organic product are volatile. And that means that they are very readily um, vaporized. So they will turn into a vapor very quickly. And that also means they will escape. So if we have an open system, then that is actually a counter to our equilibrium. We know that systems will not reach equilibrium if they're open systems. We need them to be closed systems. The problem, of course, is if what is escaping is one or more of our reactants, then potentially we may actually drive the reaction in the wrong direction, in the direction of uh, the reactants. So we need to consider all of these things and perhaps look at the comparison of the boiling points for each of these in order to ensure that we are able to um, counter what's going on. Alternatively, we may be able to take advantage of the fact that these products are volatile and use a system that allows us to convert those gases back into liquids so that they continue to cycle through our reaction. And there's a specific way that we can carry out esterification to take advantage of that. And it's called refluxing. And finally, the organic liquids and vapors may be flammable. Now this is a problem that actually relates back to here. Because remember I said one of the things that we could do and what we usually do when we are um, wanting to increase a reaction rate is to just take out the Bunsen burner. But if these vapors are flammable, then we don't want to expose them to a naked flame. So in fact, a Bunsen burner, or certainly an unprotected Bunsen burner, is not a very good choice for carrying out this particular reaction. We want to make sure that the reaction is sitting either in a water bath or perhaps we're not using a flame directly, we're using some sort of a heat mantle, which is able to heat our reaction mixture without using the naked flame, which could set some of our uh, compounds on fire. So how do we overcome these challenges? Well, this is the way we do it. We do it with a process known as refluxing. Now, refluxing is just really about this vertical condenser. 
The thing with the vertical condenser is what it does is it sits directly above the reaction vessel. You can see that we've actually used a hot plate here rather than the Bunsen burner for the reasons that we talked about um, in relation to the potential volatility and flammability of our um, components. And also the fact that the volatile components of our mixture are going to readily vaporize. But what we're going to do is to condense those vapors and allow them to drip back into our reaction mixture. So placing the condenser vertically above our reaction mixture allows us to recycle those very important gases before they escape. The fact that it's an open system not only um, stops it from reaching an equilibrium and hopefully allows us to continue to drive the reaction forward, but it also negates pressure buildup. Because these uh, substances are volatile, pressure can build up. And obviously, if we plug at the end of this condenser, we might find that uh, the pressure builds significantly to uh, cause damage to our condenser. Because of the problem of flammability, we make sure that we use a water bath or a heating mantle. Uh, ceramic boiling chips are also often used to, to help um, the uh, process of mixing. And one more important thing is that we often during this process use a catalyst. The catalyst is concentrated, I should make sure I uh, identify that it's concentrated sulfuric acid. The concentrated sulfuric acid actually acts as a dehydrating agent, helps to pull the water molecules away and encourage that esterification reaction to occur. So in terms of trying to carry out the process of esterification in the laboratory, we need an alcohol, we need an acid, an organic acid, we need some um, concentrated sulfuric acid, we need to ensure that we have a reaction vessel that allows us to attach a vertical condenser to carry out the process of refluxing in order to continue to recycle the products, keep ourselves safe and make sure that we can maximise the yield of our ester. Esters are a very important group of compounds and often can turn some very um, strongly aromatic acids into some very sweet smelling esters. I hope you will have the opportunity um, to produce one or more esters during your organic chemistry module. And thanks for watching.